brain damage. What's your game then? Host of Nivea. That don't give you the right to come round here nicking gear, do it? I'm not nicking gear, mate. Leave off. Something old street sign. I mean, look. Ain't worth having a ruck over, is it? Oh, so it's a ruck you're after, is it? <laughs> <laughs> look, you should have stayed in the cab, shouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you, you have it, eh? I, I don't want it anymore. inspect the invoice and you will find that I am right and you are wrong. That's why my name is Wayne Wright. <laughs> oh, I think that straightened him out. The Munro spares. Oh, at last, they're screaming out for these. Is that idiot driver back yet? Jim, what's it? Jim London, due back any moment, Mr Wainwright. He calls himself a driver. He couldn't drive a nail. He does his job, Mr Wainwright. He gets on well with the staff. Not with me, he doesn't. Well, not everyone, no. First chance, he's up the road, that one. As soon as he gets back, I'll get him across to Munro's with yeah, well, You do that. And tell him from me that if he gets lost this time, he'd better stay lost. Dispatch Wainwright. Dispatch Wainwright? Half the chance I would. <laughs> Lost again, eh, Jimmy? Ah, traffic's murder, isn't it? What do you mean, lost again? Well, let's face it, Jim. In the three weeks you've worked here, you've gone and got yourself lost more times than Mark Thatcher. <laughs> yeah, do you know what, love? If you had brains, you'd have to wear a government health warning. You'd be dangerous. <laughs> and if brains were dynamite, darling, you wouldn't have enough up there to blow your hat off. <laughs> yeah. Invite me around your place tonight, I'll show you what I've got under me at, that's all. <laughs> nice thought, Jim. But a pound to a penny, you'd end up getting lost on your way. <laughs> well, I would have felt that. We have hurt his little feelings, Rose. Yeah. Ah, you couldn't hurt this one even if you were to jump on him. It's like water for that speck. Rose. Jim. You a rat bag. Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> I love it when you talk dirty to me. <laughs> In fact, your boat will bear a rat bag. Listen, talking of rat bags, Wobbler Wainwright's been asking Sid where you've been all morning. Not again. You've got to watch your step with that one, Jimmy. That jumped up, never come down, little twerp, wants you out. Must keep on your toes all the time. Are you telling me he delivered it? On time? <laughs> Of course I'm not disappointed. <laughs> Blast. <laughs> Mr. Palmer's coming, Mr. Wainwright. Oh, crikey, the boss. Look busy. I am busy, you don't have to look it. <laughs> look efficient. Look modern. Look electronic, for God's sake. Paul? Yes, sir. My office right away. Morning, Sid. Morning. Shop, shop. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three bags full, sir. <laughs> uh, just tell me that again. Yes. Hmm. So, basically, you're complaining that while our van was parked nearby, your bulldozer knocked down your hut. <laughs> I'd rather think that's your problem. Morning, Emma. Oh, good morning, Mr. Palmer. Emma, just forget you're a highly paid PA and get me a nice cup of coffee. 
Oh, and don't forget you've got to find me a new chauffeur. Yes, sir. Damn. Problems, no. Anything I can do, perhaps? My chauffeur's up and left me without so much as a buy your leave. Found himself a new position in the south of France. Oh, dear. Yes, I've heard there are a lot of new positions in France. <laughs> More important things. The Yanks. I want you to familiarise yourself with these. It'll be the most important contract we've ever taken on. There'll be no room for cock-ups. Never fear, sir. My department will run like clockwork. Clockwork? We're talking quartz, Paul. Quartz. <laughs> Is there something else, Paul? Well, as a matter of fact, I did want to have a quiet word, sir. About getting replacement delivery man, sir. I thought that new lad was working out all right. Well, he, he thinks he's Jack the lad, but he's a yobbo. Talks rough. You mean he's got an accent like me? <laughs> well, we'll hold up on that, Paul. I'll talk to you about it later. Very well, sir. <laughs> what happens when the clock strikes 12? Does he turn into a slug? You and slugs have a role to play, Emma. Right, what's the SP? Well, Pam called from Carlings. Cy needs another copy of the contract for his MD. He's got to have it by three. His plane leaves at five. So if you sign this copy, we'll get it delivered to his hotel. I used to practice my signature when I was a kid. Should have saved me strength. <laughs> You're to upset him. Oh, I reckons I've got a bad habit. You've several, darling. But which one does Wobbler object to? Breathing. Why are you doing that? You're taking the mic out of him, Jim. I mean, look at what you said to him last week. What about last week? Well, it was his fault. He made a cock up with his paperwork and blames me for delivering the wrong goods to the wrong customers. The man's a div. So what happened? Well, it's quite funny, really. I had a little word of him in his office, you know. I said, if God was ever going to give the human race an enema, they'd stick the tube in him. What a. <laughs> or worse than that, thing. <laughs> Jim, you're back. Hello, Sid. What was it this time, eh? A marauding band of Apaches down the Walworth Road. How did you know they was Apaches? It was the Blackfoot tribe last week. Oh, right, right. Wobbler Wayne writes, throw in one. What is it with him? He's got it in for you, that's what's with him, son. He reckons you're insolent, undisciplined, Fair. unfindable, uncouth, unreliable. Oh, brilliant. Any advance on unreliable? Right, uncooperative. Oh, that's a good one, yeah. So I'm unreliable, uncouth, unfindable and uncooperative. Yeah. What is it of him? The man's a prat. <laughs> <laughs> right, like I want to see you. Your place or mine? Now! <laughs> if it's the right time to ask for a rise or what? <laughs> You've got more chance of being bit by a camel. <laughs> London, I'm waiting for you. Mm, get in the queue. <laughs> in now! Now you have upset him. You know, I ain't frightened. Do you know who I am? Besides, I put a book down my trousers. <laughs> now, look, I want to see you in my room. <laughs> right. I'm ready, London. Yeah, but is London ready for you? Now, there you go again, you see. Insubordination. Well, it won't wash with me, sunshine. I know the score. I've been around. Yes, you've been around. Birmingham, Brighton, Stoke on Trent. Right, little Alan Wicker, you are, aren't you? <laughs> oh, Mr. Palmer. Sorry to buy him, Paul. Something urgent. Get this to Cy Carlin, two to Tower Hotel, by three. But certainly, sir. I'm expecting a driver to come back any moment. Well, what am I then? Scott's missed. <laughs> I am warning you, London. Your next job is to deliver the Munro spares. Oh. They're in Ronnie's van out the back. Now, get going whilst you still have a job. Sorry about this, Mr. Palmer. Look, look, I could do the hotel first, then turn left over Crab Street, Battersea Bridge, and I'm away, and I... I said, out! Paul, the envelope's got to be on its way now. Yes, I realise that, Mr. Palmer, but this yobbo's not reliable enough. Hey, who are you calling a yobbo? Two to tower reception. Ask for Mr. Carlin Suite. Give it to the man personally. No one else, you understand? Just get it to the man at all costs. I ain't dodd all, John. <laughs> <laughs> the playing fields of Oxton. That's Hoxton to you. On West now, Chelsea. And you? Up the elephant. <laughs> That's elephant to you. <laughs> well, you better hit the road, son. Yeah, I'm gone. Funny thing, walk back, Mom. Hey, Chris, roll my bearing. No, OK, fair enough. <laughs> he seems on the ball. On the dole is where he'll be. As and when he cocks this one up. Instinct tells me you won't, Paul. Instinct. You want to try it sometime. <laughs> Jim. 
Jim, let it go. Still driving tonight? <laughs> you could jar on the birds off of the trees. <laughs> and into my slumberland. <laughs> hey, uh, going anywhere near my gaff being a chance? Right past the door, mate. Oh, pop this in, would you? I forgot the missus' his birthday. <laughs> no problem, mate. Cheers, son. file on the new driver, James London, and a list of his former employers. Oh, yes. Is this it? <laughs> hmm. Unemployed since... Well, according to this, his last job was Class 3's milk monitor. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, very much, Jim. Oh, no problem, love. He sent lots of kisses and said, put some scent behind your knees. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> See you later. You're filthy. And you're ugly, but I can always wash. <laughs> hey. Mr. Carling's room, darling. It's double urgent. Mr. Carling? Oh, Mr. Carling and his party checked out 20 minutes ago. They left for Heathrow. You're jesting. I'm afraid I'm not. Five o'clock flight. Oh. just received a telephone call, sir, from the Metropolitan Police. <laughs> it appears that the vehicle London was driving has been found abandoned in the Green Park area. <laughs> abandoned? Well, where's London? If you recall, sir, I did try to warn you about it. Yes, all right, Paul, you've made your points. It's all down to me. Can't it all blow us out? And I was so sure of him. Well, I'll say goodnight then, sir. Oh, I've taken the liberty of making London's documents up. He is no longer in our employ. Good night, sir. Emma. Well, at least he's gone home wagging his tail. Yeah, I suppose every slug has his day. I really am not interested, London. The fact is, as I predicted, you cocked the whole thing up. You also managed to get Ronnie's van towed away by the police. Well, if you just shut your gums a minute and let me explain... Oh, no, no, it's far too late for that. You've already been sacked. Oh, Tal, choice. Thanks very much. After all I went through yesterday, well, that ain't fair. Tough titty. I'll give you a tough titty in a minute. <laughs> You'll end up as if your face had been set on fire and then spanked out with a spade. We'll knew that. Look, Jimmy, son, at least tell me what you're doing at the West End, and I might still be able to have a little word with Mr. Palmer. I've tried to have a word with our Mr. Palmer. And now I'm afraid Mr. Palmer's very busy. Something's come up. <laughs> Done me up like a kipper, isn't it? What you do now, Jim? Ah, I'll get by a little. Put him on charm. Yeah. Back on the rock and roll. Looks like it, doesn't it, mate? Yeah, Rose, if you want to paint the town red, give us a call, eh? You bet. Bye.
How are feelings, eh, Mr. Wainwright? Three and a half thousand miles, I should think. <laughs> no, sir. Mr. Carling calling from New York on line one. Oh, thanks, Emma. Hello, Cy. Si. Look, I'm sorry about that cock up yesterday. I... You got it. <laughs> At the airport. <laughs> he put the bite on you for 20 quid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> Is me golden handshake? It's more like a kick in the cobblers. <laughs> ah, just the bloke I was looking for. Oh, well, if you want to sack me, you're too late. Do what? I'll have the law on you for that. I never touched you, you polisher. What the bloody hell's going on here? I sacked him. Yeah. And he went out the office and... Uh, Against the office door, and he, in the... Nuts. The geezer's nuts. Exactly. <laughs> Calm down, you two. You've sacked him, you say? Yes, and bloody good riddance. Yeah, one more peek about you, and I'll separate you from your breath. Hold up. <laughs> I spoke to Cy Carlin on the phone. You missed him at the hotel, but caught him up at Heathrow, right? Yeah, spot on. But he's banned. He abandoned his van. Look, the quickest way to throw is on a tube. Every div knows that. I flew the tube, didn't I? Got there, then I jumped in a cab and delivered the Monroe's package. A okay, cab? He used a taxi. How come you tapped Cy Carlin for 20 quid? He did what? Well, I had to, didn't I? I used all my own money on the tube fares. He was all right, so I was having a drink at a bar. Here, he's a lager man like myself, you know. Lager <laughs> man? Mr Carling is the president of a company. Oh, shut up, Paul. Yeah, shut up, Paul, you spam. <laughs> you know, it's painfully obvious it's going to be impossible for you two to work with each other again. <laughs> You want him out of your ear, correct? Right out. And you want a job, correct? Yeah, not near rent a twitch. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Very well, sir. You just think yourself lucky. I'll thump you in a Now, leave it out, for God's sake. Go on, Paul. Be at this address, nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Mandy's massage parlour. <laughs> <laughs> we have a complete stock of clothes pegs, and our knives were sharpened yesterday. <laughs> if I was you, mate, I'd get some tax on that old banger of yours. <laughs> out! Out! Hang on, hang on. I'm here to see Mr Palmer. He told me to be here this morning. You have an appointment. Yes, I have an appointment. Pity you ain't as sharp as your knives. I... Uh. <laughs> Name? Hey? Question too difficult for you? Oh, very funny. Very, very whimsical. 0.5 on the clap on uh, <laughs> Mr. James London Esquire. Oh. Well, if you're here for the reason I think you are, you'd better be nice to me, Sonny, because you'll soon find out that I am the main man around here. Well, fall about in my backyard. No, laddie. <laughs> my backyard. Oh. Ah, Jim. Hey. Oh, the governor. Some gaff, isn't it? Yeah, not so shabby, eh? Yeah. Get these from Mandy's and all. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> from me, I'll have some papers on them. I'll just take them. Sir. Who's that? It's Henry, the butler. The butler. Duh. Straight, you winded me up. You want a job? Here's what? Chauffeur. Me, your chauffeur? I'll double what you're getting now. There's a self-contained flat over the garage. It goes with the job. And all your mills are found. So what do you say? Why me? Uh, instinct tells me you'll be good. Well, apart from that, I need someone that can think for himself and is prepared to duck and dive to get the job done. Thanks, Henry. So what do you say? You like to wear a tip for? <laughs> Only on your head. <laughs> Governor, you just drive yourself to show her. Right, well, uh, Henry will show you around the place and fill you in on a few of the house rules. And Jim, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. 
Well, Henry, looks like we'll be seeing quite a lot of each other then. It's Mr. Compton's you, laddie. And as for seeing a lot of each other, it will only be a temporary state of affairs, I can assure you. You leaving then? <laughs> no, it's not me that'll be leaving. I'll leave off. I ain't even started yet. I had a very interesting telephone conversation with Mr. Wainwright this morning. <laughs> Warbler. Be interested to hear what he had to say. I think you'll find the situation here quite unsuitable. Unsuitable, eh? How would you know what's unsuitable for me? Do you know who I am? 25 years of the First Division, never played a number two. I can drive the lock, mate, from Rolls Royces to roller skates. Uh, I'll probably be here a lifetime. You'll not last a month. <laughs> you don't want to put pound notes on it, do you, mate? <laughs> oh, wouldn't I? And I am not your mate. You made that abundantly clear, didn't you? Well, I've got 50 quid in my pocket that says I'll last a month. Well, I'm not normally a betty man. Or put up or shut up. Laddie, you've got yourself a bit deep joy. <laughs> well, come on then, where I'm from, a bet's not a bet until it's shaken on. And where I come from, laddie, a gentleman's word is binding. So are boiled eggs, mate. <laughs> <laughs> come on, no shake, no bet. Right. Right. And there's me worrying you two wouldn't see eye to eye. <laughs> Just shows you how wrong you can be. <laughs> Youth. <laughs> Stay with us next on UK Gold. Ronnie Corbett stars as Timothy Lumsden in Sorry. It's about me first crack of being a shaper, was it? Not bad, son. Not bad at all. Only next time you have a set two with a lorry driver, try keeping your opinions about his parentage to yourself. <laughs> well, I'll put that you are a chauffeur. You've got to be calm and, and dignified on the road. Have a bit of class. Like me. <laughs> and don't boot this thing around like he was Nigel Mansell going home for his tea. <laughs> A chauffeur is supposed to open the doors and get the cases out of the boot. Oh, right. Yeah. With his hat on. <laughs> Come on, my good man. They won't jump out on their own, will they? <laughs> well, have a nice stay. What do you want me to do while you're away? Well, Sarah's having a party tomorrow night. You'll be picking up and dropping off her guests. Yeah? Oh, no problem. Henry will fix you up with some new clobber when you get back. It's me best whistle. What's up with it? Oh, nothing at all, son. If he was going out for a night on the town. Now, don't worry. You'll love Henry's taste in chauffeur's gear. <laughs> Toodaloo, son. And remember, up here for the thinking, down there for the dancing. <laughs> Ashtrays, you know what people are like at parties. And not just in here, everywhere. I'll mention it at a staff briefing, Miss Sarah. I'm awaiting the return of the new chauffeur. He's not back from dropping your father off. Here's the guest list. Ah, oh, thank you. <clears throat> oh, by the way, what's the new chauffeur like? In a word, Miss Sarah, temporary. I do believe Mr. Palmer has made a grave error in employing him. He walks, talks, and thinks like a yobbo. 
That is usually a very good judge of character, Henry. He chose you. <laughs> And, as I recall, we had his doubts about our last chauffeur. And wasn't it you? Oh, Charles came, highly recommended, Miss Sarah. His credentials were impeccable. Yes, and I hear the rich widow who whisked him off to the south of France was quite taken by his credentials. Well, at least with Charles, I could sleep at night, Miss Sarah, and not have to worry about the family silver. Oh, Henry, he can't be that bad. Hmm. And now, to the punch. A brandy punch, as usual? Yes, lots of it. Your special recipe. Ah, yes. Do you know what my secret is, Miss Sarah? Five-star French brandy. Nothing but the best. Hi, Gov. Spot of travel? Oh, the brain of Britain. You said that without moving your lips, love. <laughs> yeah, it was. We think it's petrol starvation. What? Not getting enough. Oh, no, I can help you with that, love. Petrol, I mean. Oh. Well, I would like to give you a hand, you know, but... I... You can see I'm going to a business meeting. I don't want to get all my gear all greased up, do I? Not me. Perhaps I could offer you two ladies a lift. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> well, come on then. You don't round the front. Thanks. I'm in the record business. <laughs> uh, Chopper went <laughs> sick this morning, so I'll... You know. Do you play in a band? Are you famous? Well, no, not in a band. Uh, I'm sort of more behind the scenes. Uh, record producer, actually. Is that tremendously exciting? Oh, you know, has it ups and downs, you know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's, uh get you strapped in, shall we? <laughs> Before we get to uh, airborne. <sighs> Samantha, don't you realise... <laughs> Terry! Terry! Put them down, then go and find Paul and Connie. Morning briefing in ten minutes. Where shall I put them, Mr Compton? On the roof, of course. Where else? Oh, right you are. Put them down on the table, man. But you said... Just put them down on the table. Why do you want all these empty bottles, Mr. Compton? Shut up and get on with what I've told you to do. Yes, Mr. Compton. No. <laughs> what was it you told me you'd do again, Mr. Compton? Go and find Paula and Connie and bring them here. No! Oh. Oh, yeah. I remember now. <laughs> and close the door. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. What with him and the other? Oh, is that the cash and carry? <clears throat> right. I've got a drinks order for you. Two dozen of your special brandy. Yes, that's right. The Bulgarian stuff. <laughs> Pounds forty-five a bottle. <laughs> I'll have the one ninety-nine. <laughs> it would be just great if you could fix it up. I've always wanted to meet Phil Collins, right. and I'm ever so grateful. No problem. Right, next Thursday I'll sort it out. But don't forget, up there for thinking and down there for dancing. Give yourself an altar for that mistake, right? Okay. You're only jealous. Jealous? If he's in the record business, then I'm in labour. <laughs> Where's that Connie? No idea of time, these Filipinos. 
You sent her out, Mr. Compton, to get little sticks. Tiny little sticks you said for the sausages. Well, they're easy enough to find in Chelsea, aren't they? You did tell her to get the cheapest. Oh, so it's my fault. Well, I have a sound understanding of economic principles. Oh, yeah, economic principles. You should stand for Parliament, Henry. <laughs> the monster raving loony party. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, London, and get into line. Line? Yes. You understand what a line is, I trust? When two or more people stand shoulder to shoulder, it's called a line. I thought it was a queue. Now you play snooker with a queue. A queue is a row of people standing close together, back to front. Ooh, uh, never call it that at some of the places I've been to. <laughs> Shut up. Hello. Hello. Terry, one pace forward, one pace left. Get in there! <laughs> Oi, what's occurring here? I have very strict rules concerning goings on between staff. The penalty is instant dismissal. Do I make myself clear? What, me and him? No, you and him. <laughs> Her. All I did was stand in line and say hello. I could see the look in your eyes. It's me contacts wobbling. <laughs> Into line, Connie. Ooh, stroll on, eh? <laughs> this place has got more crumpet than Lion's Corner House. <laughs> Lion's... <laughs> Is it all right if I say hello, Mr Compton? Feel free, my boy. I'd love giving you the boot. <laughs> hello, my name's Jim. Right. Now that we're all present and correct, first thing on the agenda is Miss Sarah's party. Uh, ain't it about time you introduced me proper to everybody? We are all aware of what you're here for and what your function is. Despite your choice of garb, you look like a gigolo. What's wrong with gigolos? <laughs> and they're social workers, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> the tailor is going to alter the shelf's uniforms to fit your delicate frame. Alter? We ain't... We mean alter. I was promised new gear. New uniforms would be a waste. I doubt you'll be with us for long. <laughs> Kitchen. Oh, yeah, yes, Miss Sarah. I'll be right up. Terry, fresh flowers in every room. Paula, it's only Miss Sarah for lunch. Connie, bedrooms in the hall. And what about me? You wait here. You need to know what the score is. No, don't worry. I think I know what the score is. You shout and everyone jumps, right? Correct. Well, you better get yourself a job lot of throat sweets, my son. You're going to need them if you expect me to jump. <laughs> we'll see about that, Sonny Jim. That man's a right prep. <laughs> You're going to tell him, are you? Oh, it's going to be a very interesting day. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> my name's Terry. Hi, Tom. Nice to meet you. I'm Jim. What's a gigolo? I think I had one once when I was a kid, but I kept falling off. Oh, no, you didn't, Terry. Look, just go and get the flowers, all right? I'll bring you a nice cup of tea, all right? Oh, right you are. Yes. Fresh flowers for the room, Terry. Oh, yeah. Oh. I remember now. You'll have to make allowances for Terry. He's a nice little person, really. But 19 Bob short, right? Well, something like that. Yeah. I'm Paula, by the way, yeah. and this is Connie. This is Connie. Hello, what a lovely name, girl. Yeah, it's Concepcion, actually. Uh, What's she saying? She says, are you looking for a wife? What? <laughs> because she's looking for a husband. It's a wind up, isn't it? Because I'm new here. You send me off to find a rubber hammer next, will you? <laughs> no, you see, she'd rather stay here than go back home and marry a cousin. Will you marry me? Uh, my cousin is fat with a moustache. Very nice of you to offer, but I've got to marry my own cousin. Yeah. She's fat with a moustache and all. Poor boy. We share a lot of feelings. I hope we will. Kailang and Mei Sing Sing. What'd you say? What'd you say? What'd you say? Not without a ring. You told me Chelsea was a funny old manner. Do you know, the last chauffeur was whisked off to the south of France by a rich widow. Oh. Word of advice, by the way. Keep me minces peeled for a rich widow, right? No, just mind how you go with Henry, because he's not too bad with me, but then I don't give him any reason to be, you see. I keep my mouth shut and get on with my work. Oh, dear, what are these doing here? They should have been thrown away. Oh. Yeah, I'll do that. It's all right. Oh, thank you. Ooh. 
Well, I'm going to get through some booze in this game today. Look at that. Real McCoy and all. Proper stuff. What do you think you're doing, London? Well, I ain't doing the Irish jig, am I? I'm helping Paula sling these out. Put them back. But they're inches, Mr. Compton. Just put them back and go and wait for me in the hallway, London. The tailor will be here at any moment. Do you know what, Henry? I can see you've got a problem there with all them empties. Do you know what? I see in the Bible once, a little sticker, it said, if you're an alcoholic, phone this number. There's an off-licence in Fulham. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my young smart-ass. Uh, what are you sniggering at, Paula? Nothing, Mr. Compton. Doubt it for one minute, love. Are you familiar with his work by any chance? <laughs> Have me moments. William's a friend of mine, actually. Lucky old William Alcock. <laughs> Seems a friendly bloke. Are you here to see my father? Because if you are, I'm afraid you've missed him. Oh, you missed Mr. Compton, stay here. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm Jim. Jim London. Hey, you must be Sarah, right? Oh, hello. Hey. Oh, you must be the new chauffeur. Yeah. Yeah, you don't do a lot of washing up, do you, girl? <laughs> what are you doing now, London? I'm talking all cock with Sarah. <laughs> it's Miss Palmer to you, Sonny Jim. I'm sorry about this, Miss Sarah. It's all my fault. Oh, very nice of you to admit it, Henry. <laughs> Go to your quarters. <clears throat> I'll bring the tailor across when he arrives. Yeah, hey, do excuse me. I've been sent to my quarters. London, what a naughty boy you are. Well, I do, mate, please. You're the captain, I'm the lieutenant. Fall out the officer, stand by your bed. Get them on side of page, green light on. Dip your bread in, tell them nothing. Let them buy a programme. I do, mate, please. Lots of nice guys enough. See you all later. There we go. He's certainly different, Henry. <laughs> Pardon me, my man. Where are my quarters? <laughs> Come on, man. Let's be having you. Hold your horses. Ah, oh, leave off. You've got to be joking. <laughs> London, get yourself out here where we can see you. <coughs> Don't be bashful. I leave off. I ain't wearing gear like this. <laughs> Who's the last show for there? General Patton. I mean, look at the size of it. I've took three steps forward and the suit ain't moved yet. <laughs> All it needs is a little nipping and tucking. Yeah. Nipping and shutting, more like. <laughs> well, what do you think? If I told you what I think, I'd lose the business. How soon can you do it? Hmm. Never mind how soon he can do it. I wouldn't be seen dead in this. Look, get out of it. Look, pull the birds. I couldn't even pull a bog chain in this. <laughs> look at me. I look a right mouth them. If you wish to keep the job, Sonny Jim, you'll wear the correct uniform. Yeah, I'm supposed to be a chauffeur, not bloody biggles. No buts, no uniform, no job. So, which side do you dress? <laughs> do I get a choice? No, but it's friendlier to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Palmer's roller. There's a cup of tea for you. Well, I'm afraid Mr. Palmer's not here. He's down at Mr. Stobart's gap. Oh, no. This is Paula Jim. I've got a cup of tea for you in the kitchen. Oh. Do you want it up here or down there? Yeah, you're still talking about a cup of tea. <laughs> All right, I'm on the way. So. Oh. You ain't seen a uniform he wants me to wear, have you? Huh, I look a right Malcolm. <laughs> What's Henry doing running a gaff like that? I mean, he's, he's radio rental, isn't he? Mr Palmer's a very busy man, you know. He's away a lot. He needs somebody like Henry. Henry's not so bad, you know, when you soon know how to take him. Yeah. 
preferably by the throat. <laughs> How'd you get on with Miss Sarah? She's as good as cold. She got a boyfriend? Just you keep your eyes on the road. Her boyfriend's big. Big where? In size and in business. <laughs> His name ain't William Alcock, is it? <laughs> Should get someone to help you with those. London? London? Somebody call my name. <laughs> Cashin Carey. Oh, Henry. Chief O Brandy. Henry, you old rascal. Oh. <laughs> Afternoon, Ed. It's Mr. Compton to you, Sonny Jim. By the way. The uniform will be ready for you to wear tonight. You can pick up Miss Sarah's guests. Looking the part. Yeah? Oh, indeed. Yes, indeed. Right you are, Mr. Compton. <laughs> Need a hand, Mr. Compton? No. No, I can manage. Just get on with your work. The trick to a good punch, Miss Sarah, is to use only the best wines and spirits. It's costly, but money well spent at the end of the day. Only the best. I really wouldn't know where to start. <laughs> Let me know how much the account comes to. Oh, don't you worry your head, Miss Sarah. Just go ahead and enjoy your party. <clears throat> As a matter of diplomacy, Miss Sarah, I um, paid for all the wines and spirits out of my own personal account. That way, your father doesn't need to know, uh, should you not wish him to, of course, just how much you spent. <laughs> I know how fathers can be sometimes. Oh, thank you, Henry. You are a gem. Because between you and me, Daddy can be a bit stuffy about such things. Thank you. Think nothing of it, Miss Sarah. Enjoy your evening. If you're happy, I'm happy. Hello, happy. <laughs> Snow White's looking well tonight. <clears throat> Come and get the addresses. Where is the uniform? Uniform? Are you having trouble hearing me? No, I'm having trouble listening to you. Go <laughs> and change into your uniform. Listen, my son, you can take my uniform and shove it right up... Oh, the... is that right? <laughs> Absolutely right, as far as it will go. Otherwise, you ought to take the buttons off first. I... <laughs> In that case, you, sunshine, are sat. Henry, I'll be very careful what I'm saying. I know you. perfectly well what I'm saying. Oh, only the very best wines and brandies, Miss Sarah. You crocky git, you're on the fiddle. <laughs> oh dear, what have we here? Look at this, a felt tip pen mark. <laughs> what are you playing at? You've been putting cheap booze into posh bottles. Hey. You can't prove a thing. <laughs> I wonder if we should ask Miss Sarah over and have a little word with her about it. All right, all right. <laughs> what are you after? Well, Henry, I'll let you off this time, right? But. I want that Malcolm's uniform I got dumped, and I want a new one made up, made up with a bit of style, right? And since I've just pulled this amazing bird who thinks I'm in a record business, I want Thursday night off and use of the roller. Uh, impossible! Uh, Miss Sarah! I've... All right, all right. It, it's a deal. Now, now. Well, now, was it? There's the addresses. Go! <laughs> I'll fix you, Sonny Jim. Oh, <laughs> if you think I'm beat that easy. It's no good doing that, Henry. I have got the invoice. <laughs> Remember what they say, my son? Up there for thinking, down there for dancing. <laughs> Have a drink. Thank you, Mike. 
Polish it. Hold the door. There are more to come. Gosh. <laughs> oh my God. What a letdown. <laughs> Produced any good records lately? <laughs> nice to see you back again. Shame. Can't win them all, I suppose. <laughs>